Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. At the age of 29, I, Van Mitchell, was a fairly happily married man. My wife Gloria, 28 years old, is an intelligent, personable woman. The only constant sore point in our marriage was my desire to have children as soon as possible. She did not have this desire. The other two characters in my story are Britta Thomas, Nay Nielsen, 32, and her husband Carl, 36. Britta worked for the same company as me. I'm a computer engineer. She's a human resources manager. Britta is the type of woman who, if you had the opportunity to date, you would most likely fall in love with. She's sweet, smart, competent in everything she does, and stunningly beautiful. At six feet tall, she may be too tall for some guys. Since my height is 193 centimeters, this is not a problem for me. I often fantasized, but I was just fantasizing, about seeing Britta naked. Although Britta and I weren't good friends at the beginning of this story, we were friendly to each other. A group of eight, twelve employees went out for pizza at lunchtime once a month, and she and I were often in this group. We even sat next to each other twice. My only real one-on-one -on -one contact with her occurred when her computer shut down at a very inopportune time. Usually, someone from the IT department would immediately help the HR manager with her computer. But that day the flu was raging in the IT department, and the only two employees who did not get sick were assigned a system-wide update, which could not be postponed because a possible malware was detected in the system. Since Britta and I were with the group at lunch two days ago, she called me in a panic. I went straight to her office. Having fixed the problem in 10 minutes, I performed diagnostics on her computer, since I was there anyway, and she agreed with this and was able to extend the 15-minute work to half an hour of pleasant communication. Although there is no need to go into all the relationships of the characters since elementary school, I need to tell you a little bit about myself to make this story realistic. I'm usually intellectually lazy. Although I had enough innate intelligence to graduate from a decent engineering school, I spent most of my time playing basketball chasing women, exercising, and drinking. I don't do any of this anymore except for training, which I do five days a week. I do my job pretty well, but I'm not a fanatic and I don't do much more than I should. As a pure-blooded man, I sometimes watch adult movies on the internet. While browsing a new website containing photos and several videos of amateur women, I saw what I thought was the best body I had ever seen in my life. The photos were obviously taken with a hidden camera, and the goddess's face was blurred using the app. There were about six photos of her, which I immediately copied and saved in the best photos file on my home laptop. The only photo in which the goddess's face was not blurred was the one in which her face was not visible. It was my favorite photo. All this time, I've been looking at a picture of the goddess several times a week for a month. Of course, all I could do was, for now, just watch. Our company likes to hold family events. On Saturday, towards the beginning of July, we had a party at the boarding house where there were all kinds of entertainment, including a swimming pool. After a few friendly volleyball games, I was sweating and decided to go for a swim, so I changed into a bathing suit, took a quick shower so as not to pollute the pool water, and went out to the pool terrace. I saw my wife Gloria, who looked very beautiful in a bikini that I thought was too small for a corporate event, sitting on a chaise long, sipping Mai Tai and talking to other women. I quickly kissed Gloria, went to the deep edge of the pool and made a perfect, in my opinion, a strong splash of water, which he caused, it is better never to repeat, swan dive from a height, when, after several dives, I was climbing the stairs, coming out from the deep edge of the pool, a picture of an attractive woman appeared in front of me. Despite the fact that the tall woman was wearing a rather conservative closed swimsuit, it was impossible to hide how seductive her body was. While I was looking at her from behind, wishing I wasn't wearing sunglasses, she stopped, took off her hat and sunglasses, put them on a chaise long, and continued on her way to the diving board. I saw her face when she did it. It was Britta. As I was watching her, I suddenly noticed something on her right thigh right under her buttock. It was like a mark from a favorite photo in the best photos folder on my home laptop. There was a spot in the photo that could have been a birthmark or a tattoo of something very similar to a star. It turned out that Britta might have the same mark. I thought I was inconspicuously, I later found out that I was about as inconspicuous as a diesel truck, following Britta for the next 15 minutes or so, trying to get a better look at her. Finally, when I followed her up the high jump stairs in the pool, I got a really good look at her. 
It was a birthmark that really resembled a four-pointed star. After I came to, I got dressed, lured Gloria out of the pool, and we had lunch with a few other couples. When I returned home that evening, I took a close look at my favorite photo and enlarged it as much as I could. There was no doubt in my mind that the photograph showed Britta's mark on her right thigh. When I heard the shower running in the main bathroom, I quickly turned off the computer, undressed and went to Gloria in the shower. When I found out that it was Britta who was naked in photos on the internet, I couldn't figure out what to do. I thought about her blurred face in five photos. I thought about just ignoring it all. I thought about telling her about it anonymously, and I thought about telling her in person. Every action or omission had potential consequences. I was still thinking about it when I went to the website, where I found two more original photos of her in a short video. The short video did not show her entire face, but her chin and hair were visible. At that moment, given that I knew how conservative Britta had always been, I was sure that she did not know about nude photos and videos on the internet, and if she found out, she would definitely want to delete them. Then I realized that I had to do something. The first thing I did was try to reconstruct her face in one of the photos to make sure it was her. At the same time, if I could do it, it meant that others could too, and Britta certainly wouldn't want that. It was bad enough as it was. I called my only college fraternity brother who majored in computer science. Unlike me, he was really diligent, and I knew he had earned a master's degree. After showing him this shit, I said what I would like to do, without explaining why. He replied, First you have to figure out which application was used to blur. As soon as you find out, contact me and I will send you the appropriate software tool. He then gave me instructions on how to identify the blur application, warning me that it would take a long time. After working for about 15 to 20 minutes a night for a week, I finally found the right app. That Friday, I sent an encrypted email to my colleague, received the right tool as an attachment to his reply, and then it took me a while to make a recovery. We had a busy weekend, and it was only on Sunday evening that I used this tool, as instructed by a colleague. I used the most provocative photo where her face was blurred. After a few minutes, it was not blurred. It was Britta. I made Gloria go to bed early. By Wednesday afternoon the following week, after a little introspection, I decided that the best approach was to provide Britta with information from open sources in person. An anonymous email, even if it was sent to her personal email address and not to her company's address, could be problematic. I really liked Britta, and if she had killed the messenger, I would have been very sorry, but it was the right thing to do. As luck would have it, on Wednesday we had one of the pizza days. Both she and I were present, but not sitting next to each other. During the three-block walk back to our office, I separated her from the crowd and, after a little chat, took a deep breath. Britta, there's something really important that I need to talk to you about. Do we have time this weekend so that we can meet alone for a maximum of 20 minutes? I think so, Van. What's the matter? I'm sorry, but I won't feel comfortable telling you anything about this until we're in a private setting. I guarantee that's what you need to know. Obviously, she saw the serious expression on my face and the beads of sweat that appeared on my forehead, because after a pause, she said, Okay, I'm training at Planet Fitness in Chesterfield on Saturday morning. I'll finish at 9.30, and we can go to the park behind the building and talk. If you want, you can join me at 8 a.m. as a guest. Although I have my own different training facility, which I regularly go to on Saturday mornings, I agreed. By that time, we had already returned to our office building. Britta and I worked out at Planet Fitness on Saturday morning, although it wasn't really together, as we used different equipment at different times, except that we used elliptical cardio machines side by side. She was a real fan of training, which partly explained how toned her body was. She was the object of lust for almost every man present, although she showed no sign of awareness about it, let alone interest. I got a few jealous glances when we were on the elliptical simulator and occasionally chatted. We didn't take a shower after training, but around 9.40 we dried off and went outside on this magnificent morning. I took the envelope out of my car before we sat down on a secluded park bench, each with a bottle of water. So what's the big secret? Britta smiled. I decided it was best to use a direct, very direct approach. While browsing an internet site with adult videos, I came across your nude photos and videos. It follows from the photos and videos that they were taken with a hidden camera that you didn't know about them. There are eight photos and one video. Your face is blurry in the photos, but when I suspected that you were in them, I restored one of them. 
This envelope contains a copy of each of the photos, including the one with your face restored, and a website where they and videos can be found. At first, Britta thought it was a joke. But then, when I held out the envelope, her face became serious. When she opened it, she gasped in shock and pressed her hand to her mouth. She didn't turn the photos to me, and I looked anywhere but at her. Then she screamed softly and then cursed. I do not know what to do with him. She looked at one photo much longer than the others, hitting me on the arm, showed it to me and said, Is this the photo that made you realize it was me? Of course, it was the one in the back view where her birthmark was visible. I nodded my head in the affirmative. Is that why you were sniffing my ass at a corporate party? She asked. Her tone wasn't accusing, but it wasn't friendly either. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I'm not. Uh, I knew you were. Uh, I noticed. I muttered, feeling my face turn red and sweat break out on my forehead, but not from training. I do not know if this makes you more or less a pervert, but at least it explains everything, she snapped, making me blush even more. As she was clearly considering what to do, I felt the urge to explain myself. Listen, Britta, I've been thinking long and hard about giving you this information. I only did it because, judging by the photos, you didn't know anything. And I'd bet a million bucks that you didn't know about the video. If you need my help to remove them from the website, I could help. But the desire must come from you. Britta stared at me for a long time while I blushed and sweated even more. Finally, her expression softened and she said, I didn't know anything about these photos and videos. It's clear to me that my husband Carl took them and published them, and he'll damn well pay for it. I understand that it was difficult for you to do this, and despite my initial reaction and my embarrassment that you saw these photos, I sincerely thank you for this. With these words, she quickly kissed me on the lips, which scared me. Then without further ado, she put everything back in the envelope, stood up and said, I'll contact you if I need help. Do you have any more copies of these photos? I promise I will destroy them, I replied nervously. Wait until they are deleted and then do it, was her unexpected response. A few days after the Sabbath revelation, a lot happened. These events are in no particular order. Britta quarreled with her husband, Carl. From what I learned from the rumors and later directly from her, she threatened to divorce him. Gloria started behaving strangely. She wasn't usually moody, but now often, unlike usual, her behavior became aggressive, detached, or playful, sometimes all within the same hour. A few days after our meeting, Britta invited me to lunch. There, she told me that despite her and Carl's best efforts, the site, located in Eastern Europe, refused to remove photos and videos because they are the most viewed content we have. Britta seemed very depressed, not at all as friendly as usual. In the evening after our lunch, I went to see a guy who was rumored to be a hacker in a black hat although he considered himself a gray hat. I told him about the site that didn't delete the photos. He said he could help for $5,000, and for $10,000 he could guarantee that the photos and videos would disappear forever. I showed my interest. That evening, for the first time ever, I called Britta when she was at home. I told her what the black hat could do and what the cost of her work was. I assured him that I could work as an intermediary. I also, why I took such a risk, I do not know, maybe I was thinking with my small head and not with my big one, guaranteed that if they were not removed, I would pay half the cost. She sweetly declined my offer of payment. It's not your fault. All this happened because of Carl, and he will pay one way or another, but accepted my offer to be an intermediary. I got the money from Britta, and on Saturday morning I tracked down Damon, the black and gray hat. When I gave him the money, I exaggerated a little. I told him that despite my degree, I could never match him when it came to computers. How wonderful the woman who was treated unfairly was. How grateful we were, and I even shed tears. He swallowed it. Damon called me on Thursday night the following week using a disposable phone. Check the website, he said with a chuckle. You're a fucking genius, I blurted out. Everything went a little better than planned, he continued. The jerks running the site had a big hole in their security system, which they paid for the Grateful One said with a laugh. When I brought this to their attention, I became $100,000 richer, so I'll refund you $10,000 if you and your friend will come to pick them up. I was full of gratitude again. I checked the site and the photos and videos really disappeared. I immediately called Britta at home and told her about his proposal. She was confused. You mean because he found a hole in their security system? 
they gave him $100,000 and took my photos and videos? I chuckled. That's what he meant, but I know that's not what happened. It was a ransomware program. He shut down the site and wouldn't have given them the key to unlock it if they hadn't paid him $100,000 in bitcoins. When he unblocked the site, the offensive material was deleted. Holy shit, was her reply. On Saturday morning, we went to visit Damon together. I knew damn well that he just wanted to see her in the flesh, and I prepared her for how to act. We want this guy on our side, I smiled. Britta played it right, complimenting Damon and hugging him tightly twice. Because she was ten times more beautiful than any other woman who had ever touched him in his entire life, he had a smile as wide as Mississippi. As we were leaving, she told me, There's no way in the world I'm going to tell my husband that I returned the money. It's going to be hidden in the company's safe in the HR department. When I dropped her off at the house, there were tears in her eyes, and she said, You have no idea how grateful I am, and then gave me a quick, and then a long kiss on the lips. I swore never to wash my face again. So, now you can come to the conclusion that this story has ended happily for all its participants. But don't let yourself be fooled. If you have lived long enough, you should know that no good deed goes unpunished. I felt really good on Saturday. However, I was still puzzled by Gloria's mood swings, as she went through about ten different changes during the day and night on Saturday. We had a great time at the dance club with friends, despite her mood changes. Gloria wasn't at home when I got up on Sunday morning, which was a little weird. She left a cryptic note saying, I have some errands to run. When she got home, she told me, Don't pretend to be innocent, you bastard, she growled, actually throwing something in my face for the first time in our relationship, knowing that I would never hit her in anger. A week ago, you were seen kissing this fool in the park, and yesterday you went to hell with her and got other kisses. And then, of course, there are, or rather there were, nude photos of her in your desk drawer. Plus, you made a fool of yourself by sniffing her at a corporate party, following her around the pool. I was helping her not having an affair, I yelled. That's bullshit. I know everything, she shouted back. Obviously, she interpreted my expression of confusion as an expression of disbelief, so she grabbed her phone from her purse on the floor, entered her gallery, and said, Look for yourself. There's a photo from today. There were a couple of photos of her making love to some man, but whose face was not visible, and then a short video. There could be no mistake. Everything was dated today, and she was wearing rings, and her hair was styled exactly the same as today. I immediately got up and sent the photos to my phone, despite her attempt to stop me from doing so. I just went into the bathroom and leaned against the door, and she didn't even have the strength to open it. When I came out, she was defiant. So you think you can fool around? but you don't like it when I do it. In as calm a voice as possible, I said, the reason Britta kissed me on the lips and your friends or spies saw it was to thank me for deleting the nude photos that you saw on my desk from the internet. They were placed there without her permission, and when I found them, because, as you know, and never minded, I sometimes watch adult films. I told her about them. I'm going to call her now and you're going to talk to her. Otherwise, I'm going to throw your naked ass out the fucking window. I had never talked to Gloria like this before, and I could see the combination of fear, apprehension, and defiance in her eyes. I pushed her onto the bed, put the phone in my pants pocket as I pulled on my pants again, and then used the landline to call Britta on her cell phone. Fortunately, she picked up the phone. Hi Wang, how are you? She greeted me, obviously having seen by the caller ID who the call was from. Hi Britta, listen. I need you to tell Gloria everything about your nude photos, our interactions, where they were posted, how we deleted them, everything. It's very important that you tell her the truth about everything. Uh, good, I think, was her timid reply. I'm going to give her the phone now, I continued, and then handed Gloria the phone. I had no desire to hang around here. I took a quick shower, got fully dressed, sent the marriage-killing photos Gloria showed me to my computer, and then went out for a drink for the first time since college. As a result, I got high, which I swore I would never have again after graduation. Then I went home by Uber so as not to get into an accident. I was surprised when Uber pulled up and saw Britta's car backing out of my driveway and going the other way. When I stumbled into the house, I was greeted by a repentant Gloria. I gave her a piercing look. I, I owe you an apology, she sobbed. Oh, really, what the fuck did you do that for? I growled at her. 
Britta showed me the recordings of her meetings with you, and it became clear to me that you and she were not having an affair, and you were just helping her. But you should have told me. It was news to me that Britta was recording our conversations. I assumed that technically it was a violation of the law, since our state is a state of agreement between two parties. But I had nothing to hide, and now I was glad that she did it. Despite my condition, I was aware enough to interrupt Gloria and shouted, Yes, you're going to make love to just anyone without listening to me. With that, I stumbled into the guest bedroom, locked the door, put on earplugs and fell into a restless sleep. Although I didn't know it for sure on Monday morning, when I woke up with a hangover, but it was the end of my marriage. Gloria's refusal to talk to me, and then her extremely hostile response were too much for me. Although I did go to three consultations with her, they didn't help. I just couldn't stand it. So, without even touching her again, a month after that Monday morning, I filed for divorce. I was trying to get Gloria to give me an answer about who her boyfriend was. Even when I lied and said it could save the marriage, she obviously didn't believe me. And she knew damn well that I would beat the shit out of him. So she never gave up. As soon as I served her, I informed her, Be sure to tell your friend that if I ever find out who he is, I will beat him half to death. Since it's not my way to hit a woman, he'll take your place. After that, Gloria realized that there could be no apology, or anything like that that she could do to save our relationship. So the divorce went through quickly, dividing everything fifty. Fifty, without any alimony for either side. We sold the condo and moved into apartments on opposite sides of the city. At that moment, I was really happy that we had never had children. Britta and I remained friends while my divorce was going on, and she even joined some of my friends who took me to a baseball game. I never drank again, to celebrate my divorce, which took place just four months after Gloria's paperwork was filed. We never discussed the circumstances of my divorce in detail, but from the fact that she met Gloria in person on that infamous Sunday, it was clear that she knew most of it. Then, two months after my divorce, Britta came to my office on Thursday, I don't remember her doing this before, and closed the door. Wang, can I invite you to dinner tomorrow night? There's something really important that I need to talk to you about. I had my own plans, but you could bet your sweet ass that I would cancel them all because then I could stare at Britta and because I became very curious. Of course, I replied. When and where? How about we meet at Morton's on Vine at 7 p.m., in casual clothes, she smiled. Great. I'll see you soon then, I replied. She smiled again and then left my room, leaving the door open as if she hadn't noticed her. It was obvious that Britta was nervous during dinner. In fact, she lost her temper to tell me what she wanted while in the restaurant, partly because we were sitting next to several other couples. She suggested we talk in my car. I tried to pay at least half of the dinner bill, but she refused. There are some things in life that you can easily predict. Others are actually unpredictable but do not cause much surprise. Others strike you like lightning thrown by Zeus. What Britta wanted to talk about belongs to the third category. Since the temperature outside was pleasant, we opened the windows a little, and she mostly looked straight ahead while she was talking, sometimes meeting my eyes since I was looking at her all the time. The essence of her statements shocked me so much that it is difficult for me to forget them. Carl continues to beg me not to divorce him and does everything possible to hush up the matter. He just doesn't believe that I don't trust him anymore, and that fighting the divorce won't help him. Is it because of the publication of your photos and videos on the internet? I asked. That's a big part of what's going on because it's such a breach of trust that it hits my mind. However, it's also because he doesn't think it was that important in relationships with other people. He's far from noble, and in general his character is not what I imagined when we got married, Britta said and sighed. Besides, I want children as soon as possible, and although he said he wanted them before we got married, that's not the case now. There was too much information for me, and at first I couldn't react in any way. So what do you want to talk to me about? Well, I came up with a way to make it very clear that everything is over between us, so that he doesn't resist the divorce I filed for last week, even though we still live in the house together. Since you're the only man I know, other than Damon, I think, but he doesn't fit in every way who's seen me naked, at least in photos. You're the right person for this job. What the fuck? It flashed through my mind, but I didn't say it out loud. Britta looked at me nervously, then turned away and continued. I want Carl to find us naked in my bedroom, looking like we just made love. Actually, you might as well keep your boxers on, since we can pretend to start getting dressed. In any case, 
Britta continued, and there was apprehension, determination, and nervousness in her voice at the same time. It would have done its job. Can he be violent? I asked. He is not a violent person, besides. He does not have a gun or any other weapon. There is nothing in the house except kitchen knives, which I will hide. And you are ten centimeters taller, fifteen kilograms heavier, and from our gym classes I know that you are in shape, but he's not, and you're twice as strong as him. Britta blurted out in one sentence, clearly very worried. Can I think about it? I asked. I know you could do it, but if you can't, I have to find someone else, and I can't think of anything as effective. She quickly replied. Yes, I could. Would dancing relax you and help you make a decision? I think yes, it would help. I smiled at her. Then let's go to that new dance club on Brighton Street, she chuckled. That's what we did. I was thrilled. Britta is an excellent dancer, and during Latin American dances and slow songs, she fit perfectly into my arms. Since she weighed about 150 pounds, not too much for a six-foot-tall person, since she didn't have excess fat, I realized that when I saw her in a swimsuit and in the gym, she wasn't used to having someone strong enough to do lifts with her. But I, I could. Although I didn't drink, and Britta doesn't usually do that, I think she was excited about our conversation in the car and used the booze to calm down. By the time we left the club at one o'clock in the morning, she was quite excited. I didn't want Britta to drive, even one mile from the restaurant where her car was parked to her house, but she said she needed a car the next morning. So I dropped her off at her house, receiving a quick kiss on the lips and a thank you, took her keys, walked a mile back to the restaurant, then drove her car to her house and left the keys in the mailbox. The mile walk to the car gave me time to think. After I tossed things back and forth, my divorced, uninhibited self told my more cautious self, at least you'll see her live. You can stop yourself from acting like an asshole, so do it. Who knows? I tried my best not to think about the rest. On Sunday evening, I called Britta and said, I agree with your plan, if you still want to go ahead and think it will work. Thank you very much, Wang. Yes, I want to do it, and I know it's going to work. She practically smiled on the phone. So, on Friday, I was at Britta's house by 4 p.m. I was nervous. Britta was nervous. Even the inanimate objects in the master bedroom seemed nervous as we waited for Carl to come home. I probably asked four or five times when he was most likely to arrive, but Britta wasn't offended that she had to answer so often. Perhaps because of her nervousness, she did not remember that I had asked her before. Any time between 4.30 and 5 o'clock, she said. I was naked except for my boxers, but the rest of my clothes were laid out so I could get dressed quickly. At about 4.40 a.m., we heard the outer garage door open. Then the inner garage door opened and closed, and something that looked like a briefcase was placed on the kitchen table. When we heard footsteps on the stairs, Britta took off her robe as planned. I pretended to put on the first leg of my trousers. I tried not to look at Britta, but it was impossible. In real life, she looked even better than in the photos. It was clear that there was no reason to correct her photos. Carl pushed open the door of the master bedroom, asking, Britta, you're here. When he entered, his eyes bulged out of their sockets. Britta gasped, good game, and then said, I'm sorry you had to see this, Carl, but I told you it was over between us. You had to accept it. There was an unhappy expression on his face that, if I hadn't known all the many good reasons Britta was divorcing him, would have made me feel sorry for him. He sighed heavily, making a sound that was somewhere between a squeal, a sob, and a cry, staggered for a few seconds, then turned around and left. We froze when we heard him coming down the stairs, heard the inner garage door open and close again. His car started, the outer garage door closed, and then silence fell. All this time I was expecting Britta to start getting dressed. She didn't do it. Then she came right up to me and said, I'm sorry it was so sad, but it had to be done. Thank you for your help. Then we made love. Britta spoke first. Thank you, Van. It was wonderful. I chuckled. I must have had an out-of-body experience because I thought I just heard the hottest woman on earth give me and then thank me. Can't we thank each other? She giggled. Hell yes, thank you, goddess. After a few pleasant conversations in private, she had a shy expression on her face. Uh, Wang, uh... I have to confess something. Um, I was hoping that it might end up like this. Not for the world would I be able to resist you, I replied, and then kissed her passionately. As far as I remember, the bone of contention between you and your ex-wife was your desire to have children, and she did not have such a desire. And correct me if I'm wrong, 
but don't you have the same desire as me? And doesn't Carl have the same desire as Gloria? A wide smile appeared on Britta's face. Do you think we want to have children together? I know that's going to happen, but first let me have an affair with you. Since Carl is unlikely to ever come back, why don't you pack a bag and come to my place for the weekend? Is there a place for me in your bed? She giggled. It's a big size, so if we mess up one side, we'll just lie on the other. It suits me, she laughed. We got dressed, I changed the sheets on her bed and put the ones we made love on in her laundry room while she packed her bag. She followed me to my apartment in her car. After I cooked her a light dinner, we set about the serious task of using the rest of the weekend to determine our compatibility. Although our little trick on Carl was cruel, he got it right. Britta spent most of those four months while their divorce was going through the court system in my apartment. We made a plan to verify our compatibility and stuck to it. Fortunately, after the first month, there was little doubt that we were as compatible as possible. There were no major problems outside the bed either. Our biological clocks seemed to be synchronized, as well as our libidos, and we had a lot in common as well as enough differences to really make life interesting. Since we worked in different departments of the company and were not part of the same management tree, our relationship, which we did not hide from colleagues, did not have a negative impact on our work. However, there were several disappointed people who would like to get a chance with Britta or with me, but they were discouraged by the closeness of our relationship. The day Britta's divorce became final, I was glowing with happiness. After celebrating without alcohol that night when we went to bed, we had the most sincere lovemaking of our entire lives. I've never felt more at ease when I bluntly told her that I love her and want to spend the rest of my life with her. Britta smiled and kissed me. I love you too, and it's lucky that we love each other, because I have some news. A meaningful pause, and finally, I'm six weeks pregnant. I was too shocked to say anything. I just did as she said, and when I finally got ready to answer, it turned out that she was fast asleep, and I soon found myself in dreamland too. The next morning I kissed her and then took her face in my hands. I'm not sure I heard you correctly last night. Did you say you're pregnant? Yes, about six weeks pregnant, she smiled. How did this happen? That was my next question, which was so absurdly worded. No, I mean, didn't you take birth control? I got my pills mixed up she replied with a big smile. I thought you were giving injections. I broke my schedule and this is my story and I'm sticking to it. She replied this time with an even bigger grin. I think that means I'll have to marry you. Then he joked, does your dad have a shotgun? I bet my ass that there is, and he won't let his little girl have babies without a ring on her finger. She retorted this time with an even wider smile. You think I'll agree to anything you want, don't you? I feigned anger. I didn't think her smile could get any wider, but it did. Yes, but your compensation will be that you will be the most satisfied man in the world. Ten years later, life wasn't just good. It became fantastically good. It seems that every month we fall in love more and more, and we are madly in love with our three children, two girls and a boy. Sometimes three women in a family team up against us, two poor Y chromosome types, but we always seem to survive normally, even if we don't win. The best thing apart from the kids while they're growing up, is that I don't have to look at photos of what I think is the best female figure on the planet. Every night, a real woman with the best female figure is in bed with me. Every day I take a few minutes to thank Carl for posting these photos online and Gloria for her overactive imagination and impulsiveness.